What's up, Get Slammers? My name is Crawd Eddie, and it is time for the very first episode of the Raw Rewind for the very first edition of Monday Night Raw for the new year, January 1st. 2018. We start off the show backstage. Alexa Bliss runs into Kurt Angle and asks for her match for uh, with Asuka tonight to be called off. But of course, Kurt Angle says, "Like, look, no, we ain't doing that. We're gonna start off Raw with a bang, a WrestleMania worthy match." So that match, of course, doesn't get canceled. But then Kurt Angle comes down to the ring and announces that the rules for the 30 women and 30 men Raw Royal Rumble are gonna be the exact same. Over the top rope, um, both feet have to hit the floor and of course that they both are going to have 30 participants now that raises the question of where are they going to find the other nine participants because there's only 21 people in the women's locker room so it'll be interesting to see what surprises returns and nxt call-ups they have for the rumble sheamus and cesaro come out and they accuse kurt angle of favoritism because they lost their raw tag team titles last week to jason jordan and seth rollins But, of course, Jason Jordan comes out to defend his father and to defend himself, saying, look, I earned that shot. And Kurt Angle doesn't know the meaning of the word favoritism. Kurt Angle announces that Jason Jordan will be taking on Cesaro to start off Raw. But Seth Rollins comes out before that match and tells him that he's not being a team player. Like, why would you come out without your tag team partner to face two other men when you know that they could beat you down? And then Seth says that he will be in Jason Jordan's corner, but he's going to be there to watch him lose. So as you can see there, they're, they're not starting off as a good tag team, but we'll see where things go. Anyway, so Cesaro versus Jason Jordan. Cesaro works on the injured left leg of Jason Jordan throughout the match. And the match came to an end when Sheamus tried to distract Jason Jordan, but Rollins knocked him down and Jordan hit Cesaro with a quick move, pinned him one, two, three. The second match was Bray Wyatt versus Apollo Crews. It was a pretty quick match. Wyatt won with Sister Abigail. Then Woken Matt Hardy comes on the screen, plays more mind games. He says he converted his Bray Wyatt's fireflies into his Woken Warriors. And then once Sister Abigail is defeated, he will delete Bray Wyatt. And then he laughs, and the editing team must have had some fun with this because they split uh, Woken Matt Hardy into about 50 different screens. It was pretty funny. And then it cuts backstage. Alexa Bliss asks Nia Jax to be in her corner against Asuka, but Jax had to give... Or to get some soup to Enzo Amore, a sick Enzo Amore. And then finally, we had the match. Alexa Bliss versus Asuka. And this was actually a very competitive match. Really, uh, it Asuka dominated the first part of it. But Alexa came back a little bit throughout the match. But, of course, Asuka did win by her submission with that arm bar. The fourth match was kind of a throwaway match. It was Braun Strowman versus Rhino. Even Heath Slater tr- got involved in it, and I guess it kind of became a two-on-one handicap match because Heath Slater actually got into the ring and started throwing some punches, but the referee didn't disqualify them. So anyway, um, yeah, they got clobbered by Braun Strowman. And then after the match, I would say there was at least three or four running power slams each between Heath Slater and Rhino, but it was uh, the crowd was hot for that. They wanted to, they wanted a power slam after power slam. It was great. Then right after the match, Braun Strowman runs into Kane backstage and says that they should team up to take out Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. But of course, Strowman says he can do it on his own. He doesn't need any help from Kane. Backstage, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns are talking about Reigns' match with Samoa Joe. Reigns says. Then he wants to give payback for what he did to Dean Ambrose. And, of course, Seth Rollins is like, look, dude, I'm champion with you right now, and I don't want that to change. And then Jason Jordan walks up, and he's like, look, I'm speaking on behalf of my partner. We're involved with uh, the bar right now, but if they get involved, we'll come and take care of them. And at the end of that segment, uh, Seth Rollins is kind of just rolling his eyes there. Back to Kurt Angle's office, and Finn Balor comes back there and says he's he's going to be a part of the 30-man Royal Rumble, and that he found two sweet partners to face off against Elias and the Miztourage, none other than Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. A little bit of a Bullet Club reunion of sorts. Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe for the Intercontinental Championship, and if Roman Reigns gets disqualified, he will lose the Intercontinental Championship. 
Now, this was also a back-and-forth match. Of course, with that implication, Roman Reigns did almost get disqualified, I believe, on three different occasions. Uh, he almost used the steel steps, but the referee stopped that. And then Samoa Joe shoved Roman Reigns into the referee, and he didn't see Samoa Joe shove him, obviously, so the referee was about to call for the bell. And then Samoa Joe hits him with another move and tries to put him into the Coquina Clutch, but Roman Reigns reverses that, flips him over, and spears him for the win. Roman Reigns retains. Drew Gulak and Arya Davari come out to the ring and announce that Enzo will not be defending the Cruiserweight Championship tonight because he's sick. Cedric Alexander comes out and says he still wants competition. Davari says the only way they'll wrestle him is if it's in a tag team match. But then they're like, but you don't have any friends in the back. But then none other than Goldust comes out to his aid. And then it was Drew Gulak and Arya Davari versus Cedric Alexander and Goldust. And this was a pretty quick match. Alexander and Goldust picked up the win. The last match of the night was Elias and the Miz Taraj versus Finn Balor, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson. It was a really good match. It was actually good to see... Um, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson used to a to a potential like this. It was kind of a shame that that their reunion of sorts was kind of just reserved for just like a, a little cheap pop on Raw and a and a kind of a small match like this rather than an angle. But it was definitely still a good match. Finn Balor did pick up the win with a coup de gras. We ended the show with Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar coming out. Of course. Paul Heyman cutting one of his legendary promos. I will say that anytime he comes out. And Paul Heyman says that the odds might be stacked against Brock Lesnar, but he's still going to come out victorious. And there's a 100% chance that he will walk out of the Royal Rumble with the WWE Universal Championship. Kane then comes out to have a little showdown with Brock Lesnar. He comes out and he actually choke slams Brock Lesnar right in the middle of the ring. And just as Kane's about to walk out, Brock Lesnar sits up just like Kane does and starts laughing, gets up, and goes after Kane. And then, of course, the Raw locker room has to come out and break them apart. And that's how the show ended. Now, in my personal opinion, it was an okay Raw. It was good for definitely a New Year's show. They probably knew that not a lot of people might be watching because it is a holiday. But it was definitely a good show. And I'd give this about an average rating raw, 3 out of 5. But let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this video. And follow us on Facebook, Get Slammed Pod, or on Twitter, at Get Slammed Pod. My name is Crawdaddy, and I will see you next week for the Raw Rewind.